Alright, so today we're going to be looking at something called the wagon wheel effect. Um, so what the wagon wheel effect is, you may have noticed something like this before if you've ever watched a movie uh, and noticed on a car's wheel, whenever it turns, it looks like maybe the inside of that wheel is turning at a different rate, maybe turning in a different direction than the rest of that car. I get questions about this all the time in class. And so you can get, you can see an example of it here where you see this car. If you look particularly at the middle of uh, the spokes here, you can see that it looks like it's actually moving in the wrong direction. Why exactly does that happen? Is it CGI? Is it something that the that, that you know Hollywood is doing? Uh, no, uh, it actually is a pretty basic visual phenomenon that relies on our ability to detect motion and our ability to perceive motion. So uh, in this video, we're going to be looking at a couple of things. We're going to be looking at why this rim uh, spins backwards, and in order to get there, we're going to be looking at real motion versus apparent motion. We're going to be looking at something called frames per second, uh, and then we're going to be talking about uh, sensitivity to different kinds of, um, of motion. Okay, so real versus apparent motion. Um, in your daily life right now, if you look around and you move your hand, that is real motion. Uh, it's real because what's in front of you is actually moving. A lot of media and a lot of entertainment that you come across is going to be something uh, that relies on apparent motion. And apparent motion is just whenever there's an illusory effect of motion when in fact nothing is actually moving. So for example, me right now, if you're watching this video, all of this is apparent motion. Why is it apparent motion? Well, because I'm not actually in your in your screen. I'm not actually, you know, behind that display. I'm not actually moving. Instead, what's going on is that your monitor or your your, your iPad screen or whatever is actually changing uh, very, very quickly. Um, so your screen isn't actually moving, but it's, it's displaying hundreds of very, very um, uh, quickly uh, displayed still images. If you've ever gone up to a VCR uh, and, or, or a film reel and you've pulled out the tape and you look at it in the sun, you'll notice the photo negatives on there. Okay, so if you have a VCR, you pull out the tape and you can see these tiny little images on each of them. Well, what you're actually seeing there is actually the movie. That's actually the movie. And what's going on is that while your VCR is do, is, is playing, is is flying through those uh, through those still images and and showing you them in quick succession. Most times that is about 24 frames per second or so. And 24 frames per second just means uh, 24 still images in one second. So you think about how quickly uh, one second goes by. 24 images is are going to be displayed in that one tiny second. And generally, whenever you watch any kind of television show, any kind of movie, that's what you're seeing. You're seeing things that have been recorded using 24 frames per second. So that big camcorder that you have, um, a lot of those uh, uh, analog camcorders, whenever they're actually you know recording on tape, you're taking 24 very, very quick pictures, putting it all together, and then whenever it, you play it all very quickly in the manner it's intended to be, it looks like it's actually moving. And that's because of the way our eye works. Whenever we have something that, that changes very quickly to one another like that, um, uh, our eye detects that as one thing that is moving, not several things that are flicking in and out of existence. Uh, so for example, this ball right here, if I show it very slowly, it looks like just a, a ball disappearing, coming back, disappearing, coming back, uh, you know, kind of stuttering around. However, whenever I speed that up, the faster it gets, the more closely it looks like it's actually moving. When in fact, each of these are just, you know, copy and pasted, uh, circle one at a time uh, moving. So it's not, there's not actually movement. It's just kind of like a flip book effect. If you're familiar with flip books, whenever you kind of spool it across and, and it looks like those pages, those drawings that you have are moving very, very quickly. Um, so that's, that's a little bit about frames per second. I'm gonna have another video that talks a little bit more about frames per second and a little bit more about uh, how that's used in movies uh, a little bit later. So, what does frames per second have to do with the wagon wheel effect? What does it have to do with the way that this wheel is actually turning? Well, to, to kind of break this out, let me show you another picture. This is a picture of a helicopter that looks like it's just kind of floating around, right? It doesn't look like it's actually moving. And the reason why this happened is the way the camera capturing this footage, the way it captured it. And the way that it did that is it's going to basically take one picture per so many seconds, you know, so probably 24, uh, you know, per second, maybe even lower than that. Generally, as long as it's about 18 frames per second, uh, we will detect it as motion. If it's lower than that, we don't. 
And so what you're seeing here is that this camera was probably going at something like 24 frames per second. And for each second that goes by, it's capturing that, uh, the, this, uh, the, the, the rotary on the helicopter is spinning so fast that every time that camera shutters, it's going to capture that rotary or the propeller uh, at the same moment from the last time. So basically, let's say that you have, if that was 24 frames per second at which that camera was recording this, then what happens is that that means that this, this blade was turning about 24 spins or rotations per second. Um, you know, which obviously we know that it's very, very fast and needs to be able to get off the ground. Um, so that's why this helicopter looks like it's moving, you know, without its propellers actually moving because of where that propeller is whenever you kind of uh, take a picture and lump them all together uh, for that apparent motion. So what does this have to do with the wagon wheel effect where it looks like part of this wheel is actually moving in the wrong direction? Well, this one is works just like the helicopter. Whatever, whatever camera was recording this wheel at this time was taking, let's say, 24 frames per second. That's a good standard. Saying 24 frames per second. This, uh, this wheel that's spinning, whenever every single time that camera takes a picture, is going to be just a little bit less where it was than the last time it took a picture. So let, let's say that, you know, if, uh, if one, one of the spokes was right here whenever it took a picture, then it was the next time uh, that, that shutter came down, it was right here, and the next time it was right here, and the next time it was right here. Even though technically it might be moving in this direction, um, the way that that camera is capturing reality is a little bit slower than it actually is going. Um, and so it looks like it's moving backwards, even though in reality, the real motion is forward. So the apparent motion seems to be going backwards, the real motion is going forwards. And that's kind of how the wagon wheel effect works. All right, so to give you kind of a visual representation of what this looks like, um, so here you got uh, this man's face, and let's say this man's face is going to turn uh, counterclockwise. So in actuality, the actual motion is going to be something like this. Now let's say that you try to film this head spinning, and so the shutter speed on your camera is kind of slow, and so the first uh, picture of this video footage that you get, his head is right here. The second shutter, his head is right here. The third shutter, his head is right here. The fourth shutter, his head is right here. And the fifth shutter, his head is right here. What this would actually look like would be, whenever you go back and, and replay this footage, is something more like this where his head is now spinning in clockwise position. All right, so uh, let's try one more example. This is gonna be more in line with the helicopter um, example that I showed you earlier. So here again, we're gonna imagine that this man's head is gonna be spinning counterclockwise. So the actual motion of this is going to be like that. Now let's say that we try to videotape this one more time and uh, the first shutter of our video is gonna capture his head right as it is straight up and down like this. The second time, like this as well, because it's already his head has already spun one revolution, and so by the time that we are able to kind of uh, get the second shutter, his head is already back to uh, upright. And the same for the third, his head is rotated, and we just happen to catch it whenever it's upright. And the same for the fourth. What does that actually look like when you go back and replay it is this. It would appear that his head is actually not moving uh, because of the way that uh, you've You've, uh, you've uh, photographed his head over time. All right, so uh, next video that, that I'm gonna have is gonna be talking all about frames per second and how the human body is able to perceive uh, uh, reality and how quickly we can perceive reality.